Okay, this is lesson one in the cognitive approach, which is defining an intrognitive approach. The cognitive approach rose in the 1950s, largely because psychologists were frustrated that previous approaches had failed to explain cognition. The arrival of computers could see a way of understanding and explaining human cognition. Now, cognition refers to mental processes when I'm talking about perception, attention, language, problem solving, memory. So if you think about the idea of we crossing a road, we perceive traffic passing, we pay attention to the traffic that's coming towards us. We may draw upon a memory of how to cross the road safely. And this simple task will demonstrate just how complex the necessity of cognition can be. Cognitive psychologists believe that the, our behaviour is influenced by cognition. So this is how we perceive, will affect how we think, which will influence how we behave. And the role of cognitive psychologists is to understand these cognitive processes, to develop models and theories to explain information processing and how mental operations will influence our behaviour. A significant area of research within the cognitive approach is research upon brain damage patients. Now this brain damage may have been caused by an accident, so accidental damage within a car crash, or a tumour which can affect behaviour. Cognitive psychologists will study the damaged parts of the brain and try and link this damaged part of the brain to behaviour. By doing this, they're trying to ascertain which parts of the brain are responsible for which aspects of behaviour, so how cognitive functions are isolated or where they are in the brain. Key terms, introduction to the, to the cognitive approach that you need to know is information processing, memory, forgetting, storage, so how we keep memories, and retrieval, which is how we get memories out of our storage system, so how we retrieve them, how we pull them forward into our consciousness. There are two features of the cognitive approach, just like the way of the social approach. The first is the information processing model, and the second is the idea that brains work like computers, which is often referred to as the computer analogy model. If we look at the first one here, information processing model, this basically suggests that the brain is processed in a linear way. So if you think about a flow diagram, it's the idea that information is taken in by the senses and when remembered, it's encoded into the brain. The information can then be stored and can be later retrieved at a later time. Studies within cognitive psychology, this information is mapped to every stage. If you think about the multi-storm model, this very much flows this... It, follows this linear process, this idea of sensory and short-term into long-term model. The second feature of the cognitive approach is the idea that a brain will work like a computer. Now this suggests that we have an input, a process and an output, just like a computer does. So if you think a computer will receive information via keyboard, then that's your input. This will then be processed, it will uh, create something on the screen and you can output a piece of information from that. So you may load a computer program or you might print something off a printer. Now this idea suggests that the human brain works in a very similar way. The human brain will input information through our senses and pay attention to a small amount of this information and that information that small amount of attention that you pay is the information then that you process so for example right now I'm listening to what I'm saying but I'm not necessarily paying a lot of attention to what I can feel on my skin for example this then will create an output so the output at the moment is the word